Hi, welcome to my channel. In this video, we will learn about the different types of acrylic paint, the basic color palette that is needed to start acrylic painting, and some color mixing. If you're curious about acrylic painting but you're not sure if you are going to be serious about it, you can try painting using this call this type of paint, the small ones. Uh, you can buy them in box set. You have all the colors you need. They are very small, like 12 ml only. Good for trying it out. I remember using this to make this painting. So some of the colors from those small paint. I use them to paint this and this one as well. So now I don't use them much anymore. The kids use it for um, their artwork at school and I just store them like this. I don't throw them away until they're totally empty. I just store them in a basket. These are the student grade acrylic paint that we will be using for our beginners lessons. And there are different brands, as you can see, that we have here. It's an assortment. The reason why we have an assortment of brands here is because each time I go to the store, not one brand we will carry. We'll have all the colors that I want. Also, I have to buy the different colors from the different brands. And what's the difference between a student grade paint and professional paint? Student grade paint differ from the artist grade or professional grade paint in terms of quality and price here in the video you can see i'm showing the different brands of the student grade paint and some of the prices therein in terms of quality student grade paint has lesser concentration of pigments and so they have lower color intensity than the artist grade or professional grade paint also student grade paint tend to dry darker so when you paint on the canvas the paint is wet and when they get go dry they usually become darker whereas the artists or professional grade paint that you can see here they don't become darker when they dry not like the student grade paint here we have a heavy body paint it's liquitex artist grade and heavy body means it's very thick in texture so it's almost gel like or paste like and sometimes chalky because of the high concentration of pigment a little goes a long way as you can see here i've had this tube for a long time it looks now very old um, and but there's still paint in it and i'm going to use it for many many more painting so this is dioxazine purple and i'll show you the fun and magical things that it can do later in this video the artist grade paint also shows the transparency of its color so here's cp cadmium yellow medium the strip here shows the transparency of the yellow color against the black stripes so if the black is clear it's more transparent like the red color here the black you can see the black stripes better than in the yellow so the yellow is less transparent than the red color these are 60 ml tubes and you can see they're more pricey than the student grade paint another feature of this artist paint is that is the threads on it on the neck and in the cap so it's called self cleaning caps you see these threads and the threads there they're very strong and sharp and when you close it whoops oops wait wait <laughs> sorry uh so as i was saying this you don't have to clean the neck the threads of the neck because when you close it it automatically cleans it up for you Here's another type of artist paint. It's called open. What does open mean? Let's open it and see. So basically it is more liquidy. It's thinner in consistency than a heavy body. Let's see where, um, let's compare it with this one. So as you can see, the left one open is more liquid than the yellow cadmium yellow on the right which is more paste like and chalky like a chalk 
Open also means that it doesn't dry quickly when it is exposed to air. So it's really up to you whether you go straight to this artist color or stay in student grade paint. These are the student grade paint and we will be talking about the basic palette of colors that you will need to start acrylic painting. First we have the cadmium red medium U. U is very important because cadmium is toxic in high doses although we use small amounts of paint it's better to be careful so I recommend that you buy the U. I'll just put a little of this paint on this paper to show you what they look like. Next we have the cadmium yellow medium hue. Again as you can see it's right in the bottle. There's actually a difference between U and non U uh, but there's not a lot so it depends on also later on your preference whether you want to shift to the cadmium or not. Next we have the yellow oxide. This is more, it's a bit darker th than the cadmium yellow. It's more earthy in color. So the tube here says yellow oxide. So the label on the top has yellow ochre and yellow oxide. I use them interchangeably and here's the yellow ochre. If we compare the yellow ochre with the oxide on the brush, they look very, very similar. Next, we have the Thalo Cyanin Blue or Thalo Blue for short. We use this blue color to make aquamarine colored objects or images. For example, if you paint the tropical seas, they are more uh, aquamarine in color or blue green in color or turquoise so this is the blue that we use then we have the ultramarine blue ultramarine blue is used to paint darker blue colored objects or images and for water you paint the deep blue sea with ultramarine blue painting the Atlantic Ocean or temperate waters um, you will also use this color instead Instead of the other blue. As you can see here, the two colors of blue are really different from each other. Then we have the dioxazine purple, or we call it diox purple for short. We use this to mix with all the other colors here to change their tone and make them darker. So these are the colors in your basic palette above and then we have the rest of the colors here which are your earth colors this is titanium white i have a very big jar because i use a lot of it and really if you start painting seriously a better quality white will be better because a good quality white will believe it or not give you more white than the other type so here we need to always keep our jars or tubes closed because acrylic paint dry in open air and when they get too dry and hard you cannot use them anymore. And here's Mars Black. I bought a big jar because I thought I'd be using a lot of it. So it's Mars Black or Noir du Mar. So I thought I would be using a lot but it turns out I don't because I have other means to make a dark, really dark color, almost black. And this is burnt sienna. I use a lot of it to mix with other colors to change their hue or color and their tones or make them darker. As you can see, it is reddish in color. It's like clay. It, that's why it's called an earth color. And finally, we have burnt umber, really dark brown and a mixing color. So here are your complete set of basic palette of colors. Please check the description below the video for the list of all these colors. Finally, I'll show you how to mix this primary and mixing colors to create new colors. Let's start with red 
and yellow to create of course you know what it is orange so this is the orange color that we're mixing but first let me just spray the um, drying paint so they don't dry any further and become too hard to use so you have to have this spray bottle when mixing color like this orange the colors become too bright or matingkad, masakit sa mata. And in nature, there's hardly any color that is too bright. Usually, you find those in artificial colors like neon. So what we do is mute them or tone them down with that speck of burnt umber, just a little, uh, just a speck, and mix them to approximate the color of nature and make it more pleasing to the eye. Next, we'll use yellow and mix it with ultramarine blue to create another color oops sorry for the shaky part okay so this is the color we're mixing it's green it's called army green and again we mix it with a little burnt umber to tone it down we use this army green to paint trees like this this is the color palette that i use for this tree I practice on paper and make notes like the brush that I use for this so I don't forget. Let's create another green color using Taylor Blue and this yellow over here and mix them and voila what do we have? The Giordano green or bottle green that we use that we see in everyday life. Again we use burnt amber to mute the green so it doesn't look like a carnival color that is very bright and next we have this very pretty color in purple and mix it with white to make it lighter mixing colors with white will also make them less transparent or more opaque so I use this color for flowers and you can see here the dark part and the lighter part and it gives it a dimension and why don't I use black? I'll show you by mixing burnt umber and purple in equal parts. And by mixing them together, they create a really, really dark color that approximates black. And let's try again with another color, the ultra ultramarine blue. And again, the burnt umber and mix them. Again, another really, really dark color that is almost black and let's see how they compare with black let's take it from there and put it right here as you can see black can really it's really dark it can drown the rest of the look of your painting on canvas by using black but using the purple and the ultramarine blue based dark color it makes the entire painting a bit more together and for me very pretty and finally, let's take this red color and mix it with white to create a more pinkish color for flowers. And again, we need to mute it down to approximate nature. We use the green color to tone it down a little because green is the complement of red and they tend to cancel each other and create a more muted effect. That's it for now. I hope you know more about the acrylic paint, the basic palette of colors that you need to buy and some color mixing. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel to know more about acrylic painting.